Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, in the last class, we talked about the different composition and the plants which should be selected or the algae which should be selected for uh, biomass and subsequently for the biofuel production. So, today what we will do will systematically enumerate the features of those materials which could be used for biomass and bioenergy production. So, in parts here and there, we have talked about them. We have talked about uh, lignin versus cellulose ratio or cellulose to lignin ratio. We have talked a little bit about water. Now, we will talk in detail about it. And we have talked a little bit about alkali metals, presence of alkali metals and the problems what is being faced. So, now let us enumerate all the points. So, the way we will do is, we will first of all write down or jot down all the points or all the features which are essential and then one by one we will pick up the factors and we will describe about them. And the basic understanding of these factors will eventually help you to understand which particular material will give what level of efficiency while we'll, we'll, we will be converting it into some form of fuel or some form of energy. So, let us getting back to the slides, what are the factors or factors or the material properties, which so very way we want to understand it, factors or slash material properties. Okay. So, the first thing first and foremost thing is the moisture content and we will talk in depth that what kind of moistures are there and how it influences our understanding and calculation, moisture content of the sample. Okay. Second thing, for first of all as we promised that we will enumerate all the points. Next important thing is the calorific value. This is the next important thing, which in short also called as CV, caloric value. Then we have the proportion of fixed carbon versus the volatile in any sample. Proportion of fixed carbons versus the volatiles. Okay. Then there is a fourth factor which we call as ash slash residue content. How much ash is being produced and these are all linked to the carbon level and the volatiles content. Okay. Fifth factor is alkali metal content and here specifically we will talk about the role of silica. Alkali metal content and followed by the last important feature is what we have already discussed we will be briefly try to you know pick up those points which we may have missed cellulosic lignin ratio. Okay. So, these are the six critical features which eventually determines how much energy you can derive from the material. So, let us start with, let us get an understanding about this water content concept. What really water content is? So, there are two levels of water. One is called intrinsic water, the other one is called extrinsic water. Intrinsic water is that small amount of water or that internal water which is inherent in the material. In other words, the material is made up of proteins, carbohydrate, lipids. They 
in between them there are lot of water molecules which wobbles around them and it is the presence of the water molecule that minimum amount of water what helps these biomolecules to function so that is called the intrinsic water so let's uh, getting back to the slide and let's start jotting down those points so now what we'll be talking about is the water okay okay moisture content or water content okay moisture content so moisture content falls under two heading the first one is intrinsic intrinsic the other one is extrinsic in terms of the intrinsic without the so there is intrinsic water if we talk about intrinsic water has no influence from the weather condition that much bare minimum of water is the bare essential for that biomolecule or for that system to function contrary to that there is something called extrinsic water extrinsic water is the function of the environment see for example you are harvesting a crop in the kharif season or in the rainy season post so in those seasons the crops will have more water in them or when you have harvested the crop there is a rainfall they may pick up that moisture and moisture plays a role in determining what kind of conversion strategy we have to follow you must recall couple of lectures before we talked about it that there are certain plants because of higher moisture content they follow a they could only be processed by fermentation or biochemical route okay whereas at a lesser water content you can use the direct heating technique or chemical degradation techniques but that solely depends on the water content let's say for example let's take up a case study there is a lot of work happening across the world about algae now algae grows in water right so say for example we you have a population of algae which is growing there which is oil producing algae but now you are pulling that algae out from water it is rich in water so your first step comes you have to remove the water as much as you can and then only you can process it any further if you have to extract the oil out of it but that process is not so easy first of all it needs a space second it has its cost second it needs energy or you allow it to dry in the sun but then you do not have any control on it so this is just one such example where if you have to remove that extrinsic it is the extrinsic water it is not the one which is present inside it is because of the environment from where you are getting it and that environment is either the sea or it is a pond or it's some river right some water body so that kind of water which is coming externally into the sample because of weather or because of the surrounding falls under this category which is called extrinsic water okay and so this is basically either due to the weather one route is weather the second route is the surrounding environment surrounding environment okay so these are the two forms of water now if you see a table i'll just draw a table for you next for as an example to understand this fact so so before i put the table there is something which i mentioned which i wanted to highlight here so say for example you have a high moisture sample so this high moisture sample is generally suitable for any kind of con conversion is either through biochemical route or biochemical conversion route or you could have fermentation route contrary to that 
fermentation. Contrary to that, if you have a low moisture content, such sample goes through a thermal route. That does not mean that you cannot use a high moisture for thermal route. Of course, you can do so, but the energy consumption out here will be fairly high. Energy expenses will be prohibitive, prohibitive. In other words, you will have to spend a whole lot of more energy in order to transform a high moisture sample by a conversion route of thermal conversion route. Once we will come to all this classification of different conversion route, it will be clear to you. But just for your, from your basic understanding, you can kind of visualize that. It has more water and everything. You may love to go through a fermentation route where it converts into alcohol and so on and so forth. Okay? So now coming back. So, this is the energy expensive which is a prohibitive route. Now, I was talking to you about the table. So, let us draw tables for your better understanding. Okay. So, you have the biomass. Let me put the columns, moisture, percentage, then the volatile material which stands for Vm. volatile material and just put MAT for material. Then you have FC percentage. So, please get used to with this terminology. It is called fixed carbon percentage. Then you have ash percentage and then there is another terminology which will come, which will come in the next in the calorific value which is called LH LHV percentage. LHV percentage is lower heating value. Lower heating value. We will come to that. What does that mean? What is the meaning of lower heating value? What is the fixed carbon and all those things? Lower heating value. Now, say for example, let us do a comparison and this table will come very handy in the calorific value. If say for example, we compare between wood and wheat straw, so what will you see is that in the wood essentially there will be 20 percent moisture whereas in the wheat straw you will have 16 percent moisture. So, the first comparison. In terms of volatile mass, see the difference, 82 percent volatile material whereas in the wheat you have only 59 percent volatile material. Contrary to it, fixed carbon here is 21 percent, whereas fixed carbon here is 17 percent okay? and the ash is 1 percent whereas here ash is 4 percent and lower heating value is 18.6 percent whereas 17.3 percent. Just at this stage do not worry about this part of the table, just concentrate out here. This value is very critical and this value what is being reported in any literature is intrinsic value. So, always remember these kind of tables when they talk about, they talk about the intrinsic value, they do not talk about the extrinsic value. Okay? So, that is the reason why I put the table in front of you. Now, coming back, so this is what all you needed to know about the water content. Okay? After the water content, we will talk about the calorific value, the phase 2 of it. Okay? So, this is the second parameter which is very important for us. Okay? So, coming back to the slide, so this is B which is our calorific, calorific value, okay. which is also as I told you denoted by Cv, calorific value. So, calorific value is an expression of the energy content an expression of the energy content of the energy content or it is also a 
heat value since it's in calorie heat value released when burnt in air when burnt in air so this is another part to remember when you are burning it in air cv is usually measured is usually measured in terms of now you remember in the very first class the first phase of the lectures i told you about all the units which will be essential in terms of the energy content per unit mass per unit mass okay and or sometime or volume because when you are calculating it for any kind of liquid hence the unit is lejoule sorry megajoule per per kilogram for solid a joule per liter for liquids and a joule per newton meter cube for gases so this is the unit which is being used and cv can be expressed at two ways there are two forms by which cv just like water content intrinsic and extrinsic cv can be expressed in two process one is called gross calorific value gcv okay gcv the other one is called net cv net cv okay ncv which is also synonymous to gross is also called higher heating value higher heating value which is hhv higher heating value whereas the net cv caloric value is also called lower now you remember where this word came from lower heating value l h v now what is the difference between the two so to explain you the difference it is something like this whenever we calculate the cal calorific value we take into account the latent heat of the water vapor say for example what does that mean say for example i have a sample this is a sample and i want to measure the calorific value of this stuff so there are a lot of water molecules inside it right so if you remember in the last class i was telling what are we really deriving we are deriving the breaking of the bonds between carbon carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen oxygen likewise so on and so forth wherever there is a bond we are breaking the bond while we are breaking the bond we are pulling two things apart it is liberating an energy and that is the energy what we are using right in order to do that in that process what is happening say so for example there are two entities say carbon hydrogen there are a lot of water molecules present in and around right so when you are calculating the calorific value those water molecules are getting evaporated they are getting dissociated and getting evaporated so in other word when you calculate the complete calorific value you are calculating the latent heat of water vapor but in real sense that gives you an overestimation and that complete picture of calorific value is what is i have wrote here is called higher heating value so in other word if you have to define higher heating value is the total energy 
total I am just putting E for energy total energy content released when the fuel is burnt in air when the fuel is burnt in air including now this is the important part including the latent heat of water vapor now latent heat I am just putting as a triangle of water vapor now versus when we talk about the next one which is lower heating value what you are getting rid of in the lower heating value is this part this is the part which is not included in the lower heating value okay so calorific value minus the is what makes it the lower heating value so essentially this is the more practical term more practically used for all this kind of situation okay your LHV is equal to the CV which is calculated for HHV higher heating value minus this value okay and this is what is more practically used so wherever you see HHV LHV do not get confused because it is a very simple concept so I believe this concept is clear to you so you are removing the water vapor and then what you are getting is the real value now if you see this table now if you look at this table so in this table you see there are two kinds of water which are present here 20 percent moisture 16 percent moisture whereas LHV value is 18.6 percent 18.6 and 17.3 now essentially what you have to do when you have to do this you have to you have to really proportionately reduce the heat or, or the value which will be generated while from the latent heat of this 20 percent moisture or 16 percent of 16 percent of this other product so in other words 16 percent of the moisture value so whatever value you are getting say for example you are getting from here 18.6 minus the latent heat of 20 percent of water vapor similarly 17.3 percent minus 16 percent of latent heat generated by 16 percent of water vapor so you see these calculations whenever you see this kind of table you should be able to proportionately make up in your mind that this is the amount which I have to deduct otherwise I will get a superfluous value so what we see in this there are two points what we have discussed as of now the first point what we have discussed is about the water content so we talked about two forms of water content intrinsic water extrinsic water intrinsic water is the water which is embedded within the molecules in the core of that system whereas extrinsic water is either from weather conditions or something you are getting out from water or likewise that is external water which is getting to the system and whenever the values are given it is always the intrinsic value which is given next we talked about the calorific value in the calorific value we talked about one gross calorific value one net calorific value 
So gross calorific value takes into account the value of value which is which is including. So sorry, I made a one small mistake on the slide. Sorry, just uh, getting back to the slide. So yeah. So when we talk about the LHV value here, if, if it would have been, sorry, just this is one small correction. If it would have been HHV, then you have to remove this value. So this is in the LHV. So you really do not need to re remove the, that proportion of moisture from it, okay? So what we realize is that from the gross calorific value, GCV, you have to remove the percentage latent heat given out by the water vapor that value has to be reduced and then what you get is the LHV value. So that was one small mistake I did because I didn't keep an eye that that was an LHV value. So if you have an HHV value, high or the gross calorific value, then what we have to do is that from the gross value, you have to remove in the latent heat of the water vapor. If you remove that, you get the, you get the net calorific value, which is also called LHV, okay? lower heat value. So these are the first two concepts. Next we will go after this to the other four concepts which are there, which will include the proportion of the fixed carbon versus the volatile. This will be the next one what we will be dealing with, followed by the ash residue content and the alkali metal. And we have already discussed part of it, okay? So let's just stop here. Thank you.